think it's gonna pat you down looking for a, a mic? Is that it? Is that it? Or are you trying to keep this secret from us? <sighs> do you want to mic me? Yeah. I do. I Why? Do. I do. So that we can follow what's going on, what you're talking about, and any possible leads. Anything that might pass you by in the heat of the moment, I don't know. You're not in perfect shape. Okay. Then do it, do it. Thank do you. It, do it. You go through the room, you sit down. He's a little jumpy. His uh, shoulders are kind of high. His eyes dart towards the main room. You got anything to tell me? Anything to give me? I look at him kind of intently. I feel very calm suddenly. And then I pull the <laughs> the mic, the mic, the mic, the mic, the mic, the mic. This is Red Moon role playing. And I say I might take up on the offer. But I need to know what you know. And when I know what you know, I might give you what you want. Okay? I'm wired, so we don't have a lot of time. Fuck, you're wired! Holy fucking shit, what are you doing? Calm down! Calm down. I turned it off. Okay, show me the shit. Sh sh show it to me. Okay, I need to I... know this is not being recorded. It's nothing that I'm about to say is like good to have. I can't, tape. because they are watching. Okay. You okay. just have to trust me. I pulled it off. I have no interest in them hearing this conversation. Do you hear me? Okay. No interest. I want to know what you know, and I want to know what I am. And when I do, I will fucking give you what you want. That's the deal. So we talk for one or two minutes, and then I put it on again, and then we do another talk that they can listen to. Do you get me? I got you. Okay. I've been working in the morgue now for five years and um, when I look back at the records there's there's been a total of three corpses gone missing during this time I have a pretty full recollection of you getting up the others I was on shift they're gone they ended up in a hearing about it all you know suspected me of all sorts of it perverted bullshit, you know? And, um, but yeah. I, you know, I come here a lot. I have my place just nearby. Yeah, 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 yeah. I inherited from my dad fucking disappointment of the family, but I do have a flat in the city. You know? Yeah, go on. Okay, so... Go on. I think they've drugged me and made sure I shouldn't remember these things. The people like you the breed. I, I, I need to know I'm not fucking insane, okay? It's like one of the corpses. You know what? I've seen him here. Every single, every single after work beer I've had here for the last year. There he is. I've double checked with records and sure as hell it is him. He comes here every night. What's his name? I don't know. I haven't approached him. I mean, in the records, it says that he's a he's a Kenneth, a Kenneth Wilson. Okay, I write it down. But uh, yeah, that your guess is as good as mine. If that's his, yeah, whatever, you know. Okay, so this one is a walking corpse. You are a walking corpse. I'm sitting right here. Uh, I know, but there's two things that need to, we need to cover. It's like a. I don't know shit. B, this guy does. Good. Is that enough for you? Maybe. But I, I, I put out my hand towards him. Just feel me. I'm not dead. Alright? I got a pulse. He reaches out with a clammy hand, holding you tight, looking for your pulse. When he feels it, he looks a bit disappointed. You know, maybe, maybe this, maybe this is all bullshit. You know, maybe I'm just making things up. When he says that, I pull the cording again. You think it's bullshit? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you're just a nutcase, right? But you know, um, good talk. I, uh, I don't know. It's like you, 
you come back here and you'll see, you know. If you're not what you think you are, uh, if, if you're not what I think that you are, uh, yeah, then we have nothing to talk about, okay? So you prove your c credentials, yeah? Hmm. Maybe with this... this dude, yeah? Yeah, sure, sure. This dude, that is, that is very well worth to, to check out, I guess. Um. Look, I know the irregularities. I know what it looks like. And I know that I've been under investigation. And I'm gonna fall under suspicion again. But you gotta believe me. It's not me initiating these disappearances. If it was, I would remember, okay? Okay. It's not me, okay? Okay. 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 We do like this. I check out your lead. And then I will be in touch again, you understand? I got you, you got my number. Yeah, I do. You, um... You uh, had any... any symptoms? No. I look at him. Deadpan. I don't. Yeah, he looks at you intently. At the curve of your lips. At your eyes. Your hands. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm just fucked up. I, uh... I, uh... I'm sorry I woke you up in the middle of the night at the hospital. I, um, uh, I shouldn't have done that. Please don't press any charges. I got enough trouble on my plate as it is, okay? Are we good here? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so, Michael. Okay, I'm gonna get up now. Yeah. I'm gonna get up now and I'm gonna walk. And I, if I see anyone following me, okay, anyone at all, this is off. Okay? Then it's off. And I'm gonna talk to Kenneth. And you're never gonna see him. Okay? Okay. I'm getting up now. Do it. He rises, uh, leaves his coffee and brandy, and saunters for the door. I say in the microphone, let him go, we got another lead. When she turned off the microphone, I immediately told Dave to drive up on the actual street. Not in front of the place, but just to be so that we have a view of the place mm -hmm. if he comes out. When I hear the final correspondence with him mentioning this Kenneth and uh, uh, him knowing that he uh, is being watched, I uh, just tell Dave to write, let's just have a look at the guy and leave it there. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, come out here, come out here so I can get a look at you. He brings out a uh, digital camera watching the entrance to the, the bar. Uh, well, we're a bit away, so it should be fine. Couple of minutes, he's out. I uh, gotcha. Yeah, smile for me, baby. Yeah, I gotcha. Hmm, nice walk. Strutting. That's good enough. Yeah, I got a good look at him. Paul, Kenneth Wilson, I say in the microphone. Kenneth Wilson. Look him up. I uh, make the call to uh, the HQ and to Sergeant Shirley. Shirley? Yeah, we've got a possible name, uh, Kenneth Wilson. All right, Kenneth Wilson on the board. Get it on the board. Okay, gotcha. Pretty common name. We have to debrief with Ellis uh, outside from that, but start looking him up. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I, lost, uh, I, I lost track of audio from Ellis. At like one minute and 35 seconds? Yes, we all did. Okay, okay. Just making sure it's not any transmission problems. See you back here, running it. I finish my beer, you know, calmly, and then I go out from the bar and go out to the car. Dave, did you send the photos? Yeah, I'm, I'm uploading it now. Can you... Fuck, yeah. Mm, I'm out of batteries. Can you share your wireless? Uh... How do I do this again? Uh, stop fidgeting with the phone. It's not my kind of thing. But I think I managed to do some kind of hotspot. Yeah, he starts transferring like small thumbnails of the images to get them fast to um, to the flop house. Hmm. Yeah, we're getting pictures. 
Good, this should help finding a match. Thanks, guys. Good job. So, um, who are we looking at here? Um, this is someone called Michael, and... Okay, okay, this is not Kenneth. This is not the Kenneth we're looking for. Okay, oh fuck, yeah, strike that then. Okay, so who is this guy? This is the one that Ailis was meeting up with. Are you coming back, Ailis, or...? Uh... Yeah. yeah, I get into the car. Okay, as you get into the car... I put the phone on speaker. So this Michael, uh, he gave you the name Kenneth Wilson. Yeah, I'm am s- sorry about the the transmitter. I I accidentally pulled the cord and didn't. I I, I, I have I always have trouble with technology, but I, I got it on then, right? Like you got you got the the conversation. We didn't know why Kenneth was named. What what can you tell us about him? No, it, it's it was a bit unclear. He wasn't really like. I'm not really sure if he thought that I was some kind of. I, I don't know. He was a bit disappointed when he realized that I was not a supernatural being, uh, an undead zombie or something. So he gave me that name because that was another case like me, a person that died and got revived. Um, And he says that this Kenneth is frequenting this bar uh, in after work hours. So that is a bit cutting it close. I suggest that we split up. Uh, I can stay here uh, for a while um, if you want to go back to Croydon. But, like, it's worth checking out. It's at this point, as you've been speaking, that I started getting back in the car myself. And I sit down and I go, We're not going to be splitting up, Gabriel. I am aware how much you want to be by yourself right now. I narrow my eyes slightly. But it's not going to happen. I make a face. Another person who he says didn't die or something. I can't believe the individual didn't know anything else. He was a total nutcase. He was he was disappointed when he felt my pulse. <laughs> How about that? I smile. But what do you honestly think about this Kenneth Wilson, then? I don't know. It's something, but it could be nothing, and then we waste a lot of time looking for bombs. Yeah. Well, I'm going to head back to Croydon... But I definitely think you should try to see if you can follow up on this. Do you want to uh, stay behind as well, Ward? I narrow my eyes a little. I'm not entirely sure what the best course of action would be. However, after a moment, I remark, maybe it's better I return with you for now and we go over the analytics at the main site. At least for now. How much time have we got? I look at my watch. It's a... 12.35 12.35 now. You haven't been gone more than like one and a half hour total. But yeah, that leaves like five hours until sundown. Yeah, I start taking off the wire um, from me and then I say, okay, but then I stay here and keep a watch out for this Kenneth. It would be really good if I could get pictures or information about this person. Um, and then I will just be in touch with you. You're going to check in with us every hour. And you are forbidden from going after this individual by yourself, Gabriel. Keep in mind who has what you need. And I tap my jacket pocket ever so slightly. I look at you, and for what's a second, I looked that furious again. Like, like I would want to punch you or hit you. And then I relax a bit take a breath and say yeah but Francis don't forget who's the boss here I won't forget who the boss is but currently you have a condition which is making you not yourself please I'm fine I'm really fine and you have to just step step back a bit Francis you're not my nurse okay no I'm a doctor I turn around from the front seat at this point and I, I just look at Gabriel, and I say, you're not fine, Gabriel. You're you're way lost into this. Don't you understand this? Can't you see that you've completely fucking lost yourself? Yeah, sure. You're a fucking mess. But I'm trying to do my job, so I suggest you do yours, and then I just get out of the car and slam the fucking door and go back into that fucking pub. Good riddance. Let's hope this turns out to be nothing and we're just rid of the burden for now. Oh, Dave shakes his head like, 
What the hell was that all about? Shall I double back? Go get her? No. Let it go. Okay. Okay. You're the boss man. I miss driving. However, send another man down here to keep a watch on the area. Sure. Got it. Yeah, Dave here. Yeah, we need uh, number two on Ellis. We need a babysitter here. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. All good. So yeah, we we got we got to have uh, eyes on her in about half an hour. Uh, what you want to do? Heading back to Flophouse? Could you just drive uh, around the block and then pace us in another position? I want to see if she comes out again. Sure. Uh, just until we have another set of eyes on her. This is stupid. This is. I can't believe we're wasting time with this. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's a good spot, right across there, across the street from there. Yeah, 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 we can do it. Okay, one second, just driving around the block. Indeed, I frown a little, and then I remark, You have to remember, Paul, she's currently undergoing an extreme chemical addiction. That's the nature of this contamination. I believe, according to the reports I've read, it's even worse than... Cocaine or heroin or anything like that. I I I, I know. Yeah, I, I try to be forgiving in this, but what frightens me is that she doesn't realize it herself. You know, considering her past, you know how, what things, what addictions she's had. I I I can't see how she's not seeing this herself. If I'm honest with you. There's a lot we still do not know about this contagion. I lean forward slightly. I've been given notes, and let's just say a lot of it seems almost completely illogical. If anything, I feel our department and the people who've been researching this actually have no idea what we're actually dealing with. Something I intend to rectify, but for now, I'm going to have to suggest that contagion might very well have mental effects as well as physical effects. Yeah. You were saying that the girl had been drinking from the dog's blood? Yes. Yes. I would say severe mental effects. But still somehow they seem to run some sort of organization. Yes, that part I confess I find hard to believe. But what can we do for the moment but believe in the words of our superiors? At least on this matter. You saw the video. Yeah. Or it seems so s- small scale somehow. What they do is, is random fires and uh, bombings. What are they even getting at? Not sure. The strange thing is the, the case with Andrea that she was stalked. That 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 the, someone was looking her up because she was looking at someone else up. It's as if they've got these eyes everywhere. But it's no goal. There's no purpose of it. I admit I don't get it either at this stage. I also don't quite get our superior's utter determination to simply deal with the problem by extermination. And I look quite troubled as I say this. After all, they seem to be very keen for this to be us versus them. But they're people, goddammit. I'm a doctor. I don't kill people suffering from an illness, unless it's the last resort. An illness or some kind of chemical addiction. It's... I I admit, it's strange. Anyway, for now, yes, let's just cycle around once more. Dave tries to shut up, looks at the road, parks you opposite side of the street. It's um, a bit ways away, like two cars away, so um, unless she's really looking for you, this should be a good spot, yeah. And, um, you know, my only tip of this is, like, leave the philosophy for others, yeah? We're in the field now. Okay? So, yes, don't overthink it. It's funny, in a way, I think to myself, to hear this from a junior, but then again, he would have been recently uh, drilled with it, and it's kind of refreshing. And I sort of blank my mind for a bit and try to think on the practical at hand. I think what gets to me is the 
family situation and also the Ellis situation, I feel like I'm not really trusting people right now and that sort of draws me from being focused. You find yourself throwing um, glances at your messages. No messages. No word if your family is safe. Gabriel, what do you do? I send an SMS to the same number and say, what address? I'm coming. Like what? Question mark, question mark. Back in the pub? Question mark. What's up? No, your place. I keep my promises. There's a delay of maybe two minutes and then an address. Is it close? Yes, it is. It's uh, only a couple of blocks away on Tower Hill. So uh, it's closer to the marina, a bit more south. But yeah, it's um, in the Tower Hill region. That's one hell of a one-room apartment. It's got to cost a lot. Uh, I get out and I, I try to think of being a bit stealthy if, in case I get followed. But I'm like, I'm not really feeling that good. So I don't have my usual suave in this. Like if, if I was feeling good, I could lose people following me. But now I'm, I can just... Barely focus on what I'm doing. Let's first see if you spot any kind of threat or um, or your your friends watching you or anything like that. So uh, go for an awareness plus wits. Yeah. Uh, two successes. Yeah. No, you're in the clear. No one's watching you. All is good. Coast is clear. Great. Yeah. They must have gone gone back to the um, back to headquarters or something. Mm. Then I go towards that address. She's moving. She's moving. Dave says, she's right there. Yeah, Dave, you don't use the car. Can you go yourself? How good are you with tailing? I got this. No worries. And uh, I, I look back at Francis in the back seat. Do you want to take the driver's seat for now? Yes. Sure thing. All right. Stay at least two blocks back with the car. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. He waits and waits until she almost rounds the corner. Exactly when she's rounded the corner into a side street, he pops open the door and runs. Hmm. And then he slows his pace, just as he gets to the corner, rounds it, and he's gone. There's um, and there's a crackling in uh, your com radio. And it's like, yep, I'm on the move. I got her further down the road. She's walking fast. But yeah, I can see her. Thanks. Uh, yeah, the, the lunch crowds are okay. I still got her. Yeah. Yeah, she's turning. She's down, turning south. Yeah, she's walking on the side of Tower Hill right now. I, at this point, start driving slowly, and I frown as I do, remarking, God damn it. I am starting to think that interference. Something else must have been said. Either that, or she's been lying about how well she knows this individual. And did you see, did you get any indication of what she was talking about before when the sound went out? No. I simply saw her sit down with him, begin speaking, we lost radio, and well, here we are, but let's start tailing. We need to find out what she's trying to do. What could it possibly be? I just don't understand. I, I just throw my hands in the air like, no, I'm, I'm not even going to think about it. You know, it's it's... Something that's so important to her. I mean, clearly she's somehow thinking clearly in her own mind. Has he promised her something? I don't know. Let's... let's find out. The apartment is right on the corner of Shorter Street and Tower Hill. Across the road is uh, Société Générale, the um, Arden University. It's on the corner of the London School of Business and Finance. There's just a couple of smaller apartments accessible from this entrance. There's a doorman, a um, marble lobby, darkened, uh, muted colors. The light is low. It stinks of luxury. The place is uh, clean, spotless. A couple of uh, metal doors to um, uh, elevators going up. No stairs. There's a uniformed guard in the lobby as you enter, Ellis. Yeah, I go to the elevator. I don't know, did he describe what floor it was? 
Yeah, it's the third floor. Yeah. Miss, miss, excuse me. I just go to the elevator, not paying uh, attention to that guard. Miss, are, are you expected? I gotta bus you in. I turn around and show my badge. Uh, all right, could step up. I need to take a badge number. I'm sorry, it's it's a standard procedure. I don't really have time for that. I press the elevator. You can see the elevator is starting to run down from the seventh floor. Six, five. Miss, I really have to Look, insist. Unless you, this is police unless business. Unless you can have an invite and you can be bussed in by one of our guests, I really need your badge number. Sure. I give in my badge. Thank you. Um, ha- now have a good day, miss. What's your name? Uh, me, I'm Owen. Okay. You will get a phone call later for intervening with police affairs. We're both just doing our job here. You have a nice day now, lady. Yeah, sure. Talk to you later. I go to the elevator. The third floor. There's um, three doors here. This place must have built somewhere in the early 1900s. The uh, fixtures are well preserved. The um, hallway dark here as well. The light amber. The... 314 address uh, to the door you've been given has no name on the door. Only some a couple of child stickers, maybe, of the buzzer. I know. Michael opens the door. There's two security chains. From inside, there's a bright light, white in contrast to the shades in the hallway. Okay, what you want? I'm delivering on my part of the deal, right? You're gonna let me in? Okay, are you gonna... Just let me in, Michael. Okay, I, uh... Come in. He opens the door. When he says it, it says some weight is relieved from his chest. He chuckles a little bit as he shows you into a minimalist apartment. It's furnished with IKEA furniture and some expensive antiques. But uh, it's sparse. Loads of fast food. It's um, Somebody's been staying in for a lot. The place was nice once, but now it's kind of a dump. I'm not wired anymore, but you can pat me down if you want to make sure. Yeah, turn around. He goes for it, inexpertly patting you down. Yeah, inadvertently, yeah, like ruffling your clothes. Like, yeah, we're, we're clear. Do you want something to drink? No. Oh, no. Uh, fuck, that came out wrong. Anything I can get you? No. Okay. You see, I've been thinking, Michael. If you want me to give you what you think I can give you, you might have to die. I look at him. I, uh, I know the stories. I, uh, I, I mean, I've seen it happen, you know. I, I, I saw you. But tell me, do you think you'd only have to die? Or is it something else that you need to... I don't know, chant or dance or... eat some kind of mushroom, whatever. Or do you just die? I mean... I take a step closer to him. None of them have, you know... Nothing of it's been regular and from what I it's got to be in the blood it's that that's got to be how it's you know given so yeah if, if you just if I can just he takes out a small sharp pocket knife from his pocket if I can just you know yeah you want to drink my blood you, you sure wait before you do it do you think you have to die first or after? I smile. I, uh... What do you want from me, really? It's like, I, I... I just, you know... Can you prove to me what you are? You know? I take another step. No. But I think you're right. It's all about the blood. So let's... Let's experiment, Michael. Do you want to drink my blood? See what happens? Sure. I hold up my, my wrist. 
you are the only one that I can talk to about this. I'm I'm not here to, to trick you or anything. I just want to know. It's gonna be hard. Does it hurt? To die? To... I take another step. To be... To be what you are? Are you in, in pain? No. Oh, that's good. I, uh... I really don't like pain. He steps forward and as he does... The smell of his anxiety and excitement... Makes the air thick. It's not as pungent and strong as the stuff in the bottle, but it's warm and alive and full of vibrant emotion. And the smell comes right from his neck, right under the skin. He moves so close, keeping his eyes on your wrist and his knife as he takes it out. You can almost hear the beating of his pulse as he does. Blonde hair falls across his eyes as he moves the point of the knife up towards the bend in your arm and he starts to push down. It hurts a little. He starts drawing blood, but he needs to go deeper. There's a sharp pain. A yanking. A uh, feeling. This. The hunger. It's for him. The pain is sharp. He cuts too deep. The blood flows a bit too freely. Blood drops on the white floor. But he drinks it. I, I... He starts to move his head forward. You feel the pain, anger rising somewhere. Can you give me a uh, composure um, plus um, resolve check, please? Yes. It's three successes. The hunger groans rising from deep, but it stops somewhere in your hackles, in your throat. You keep control. It's as you're sweaty, itchy, but you can breathe, you can keep it down, you can keep it steady, and his lips touch your arm and he starts sucking. It's somehow disgusting. He spills a little, gulps one, two, three, four big gulps down. The wound keeps bleeding for a little bit and then it slowly, slowly dries out on its own. I look at him. Does he kneel or does he just bend and uh, do it? First he bends, but now he is down on his knees all the way, still trying to suck whatever little fluid he can from the closing wound. I look at him with a strange sort of interest. It's like, this feels very normal somehow, and yet is so sickening. And the other life feels very far away. The job, being a police, this feels like it's, it's supposed to be. And I, I feel kind of a, a tenderness towards him when the pain has gone away and that initial anger is gone and then act on instinct and takes uh, a grip of his hair and pulls it back so the neck is exposed and then I also kneel down and I think I bite him he gasps the insight of what's about to happen comes too late he looks at you you're not really sure how to do this but yes is something that flows very naturally. And as you open your mouth, you feel something stretching against the skin of your upper lips. 
and as the mouth is open, you feel something, a snapping of bone through your skull. And he screams. He shouts. Like an abandoned baby, like a person confronted with his own death. He just screams. I sink my teeth in him. It feels like the right thing to do. I don't do it with savagery. I just do it tenderly and controlled because I hold him and I, I'm, I'm quite strong so I can hold him without like I, I pull my I pull him towards me still holding his hair and then I like slid my arm around his chest and back and then I hold him like like a lover and then I do it gently gently his scream stops the moment that your incisors pierce the flesh it's easy to adjust the angle, cutting holes pretty deep. Is he going to die from this? It's your first time. And it feels, and it feels, it feels like the first time he got accepted to the morgue. It feels like the first time for responsibility like fear, like the moment that he had lost his first football match, the rage, the anger, the concern. You see flashes of him watching the dead. You see flashes of him dancing alone in the morgue. He's made up a girl with makeup and tender, tender caresses. All his forbidden secrets are there in the blood. But most of all, his fear, his excitement, and the scream turns into a moan as he collapses into your arms. Blood pumping steadily. This will not end until you make it end. It's been 14 heartbeats of his blood into your mouth now. He's becoming weak in your arms. I'm, I'm feeling a bit of a euphoric euphoric and giddy and happy for the first time in such a long time this is this is amazing it's the first time and it seems to last forever i don't want to kill him can i can i stop it's the first time and it's hard to know what's enough it's hard to know what kills what gives pleasure what is just enough when you start to see the deep dark places in him it's almost too late, but go for another Resolve plus Composure roll, please. Ooh, resolve plus Composure. Uh, oops. Uh, no. No, no successes. Yeah, do you want to push it? Yes. If you go on, he's gone. I want to push it. So yeah. How does it feel when you try to summon, muster all of your willpower to tear away? I don't really want to. It's it's so good, but some somewhere inside me, something is screaming that he will die, and you will be a murderer, and you will be a killer. And that kind of feeling is enough. I'm trying to pull away. Reroll three of the dice from that wonderful feeling. One success. You barely, barely manage to stop before the heartbeat is entirely gone. This man is gonna need medical attention. As he's down on the floor, just a ragged package of meat and blood and moans. He seems so small, so light, like he's nothing. Like hollow bird bones in a sack of flesh. He spasms a little, gasping for air, his eyes wide in rapture, looking at you like a lover. Shit. I, I look at myself and... I... Ah, oh, fuck. Fuck, you've got blood all over your throat, you've got blood all over the front of your shirt. This shit was not clean. Not at all. Shit. I look at him, is he gonna die? He's still moving. Twitching. I look at him, 
calmly first and then I realized that he might die and I tried to think fast but the blood is just flowing through me and it's it's easy to, to just get lost in that kind of euphoria but I take out my phone and I yeah, 999 is the main emergency number is that yeah 999 what, uh, what's your emergency yeah my name is Sergeant Gabriel Ellis and I have a suicide attempt here and I think I need an ambulance what's your address I give him the address I, I'm I'm all bloody. I, I tried to stop the blood, but I, I'm all bloody and... Uh, yeah, there's a dispatch coming. Just hold on. Five minutes. Yeah. And I, I turn, I, I hang up, and then I... Is the blood still flowing from his wound? Because in that case, I tried to uh, stop it. There's, there's still blood flowing out. It's like the wounds are not that deep anymore, but he is bleeding out there on the white carpet. The spot under him is growing and growing and growing. Okay, I, I, I know first aid, right? I have one in medicine, so I, I, I put my hands towards the wound and tr- just hold on. And uh, But it's also kind of fascinating to me. This, like, he is, it's not like, I don't really care. I care, but I, it's also, I, I look at him with like a bit of a, a dispatch. <laughs> like, I did this. And, and it's also very beautiful in a way. Your sense of fascination might hinder you, make you slower, as you like to watch the drop, drops of blood coalescing there. But I'll give it a shot. So um, give me a wits plus medicine. One. You want to push it? You need one more success or he's gone. Yeah, I want to push it. Yep. Cross of willpower and re-roll three dice. Three. The reverie breaks. It's a man dying. You stop the bleeding. You have to... Yeah, you need to pull out his belt. You need to use whatever's around. Maybe that pillow. You got a some kind of pressure on the neck. You got something taking up the blood. It's not flowing as fast anymore. He's breathing shallow but steady. This looks like he's stabilized. He is. Uh, as long as nobody moves him, he should be good. He should be good. He oh, he was good. He was magnificent. He's still in you. I just run my fingers through his hair and says, "Shh, he's gonna be all right." Like, I feel strangely possessive of him. Like, that his blood in me and my blood in him makes him my mine, in a way. Yours. All yours. This is fine. You did good. Far away, in the distance, there's the baying of an ambulance. Yeah. It's fine. You bled a lot. It's okay, Michael. It's okay. Help is coming. In the car, a phone call comes through to Paul. It's from HQ. It's from the flop house. It's Harris on the phone. <coughs> okay, so guys, uh, I just intercepted a uh, distress call to 999 uh, to the address that I can see that you're at. Uh, what's going on, guys? Damn it. Did you get the name? Did you get the name of the caller? Yeah, 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 it's Ellis. Ellis called it in. Uh, would you not know? Suicide attempt. Suicide attempt is what she said. Suicide attempt. Well, it's probably best to have a police t- or someone from our side there. Could we have someone? Do you want me to stop the ambulance? Do you want them to get our dispatch there instead? If we could take care of a, p- a possible injured, then yes. Fuck, it's going to be a 10 minute delay. The question is, like, with how, how you want to roll this? 10 minutes later, or it's going to be the ordinary ambulance dealing with this? And the City of London Police. And 
You better believe it. We do not want that. At this, I interrupt and say, well, we were already on our way, and I'm a doctor, so... We'll be there before your team gets there. Give us the ten minute delay. Cool, cool. Dispatching. We're dispatching one cover ambulance. It's going to be a hospitalier the wagon coming in. Okay? Right. You get up there. I'll wait here. I want to do one thing. When he's stable, I will go and look into a mirror <laughs> to see if I have any blood in my on my face. On my clothes, it's okay. But I need to wash out any blood in my face before anyone is coming. There's a splattered smile ear to ear on your face. So much blood. <laughs> Everything under your nose is covered. Shit. I need to wash it away. I, I tried to, to wash it away. So I've sped up the car and I'm hoping we've actually now arrived at the address because obviously it was tailed. Yeah, you've been staking out the address for about five minutes at this point. Yes, so I dart out of the car and make my way into the building, and I'm assuming I see that gate guard, and I say, Where's the person who needs the ambulance? I'm a doctor. I flash my identification. Shit, your colleague's on, on three? Your colleague's on three, okay? Good, and I start heading up as quickly as I can. Yeah, he, um, he picks up a phone. Dave is just right behind you. You don't think he left the gun in the car. He charges up to the elevator and starts pushing the button. Okay, what can I expect up there? I have no idea. Just be ready. I've got some basic first aid on my person, which I collected from the car. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Who's hostile? Who's hostile here? No, I just need to know. Who is hostile? No, no one's hostile, boy. It's a suicide, she's saying. Suicide. Okay, okay. God damn it, what were you up to, Ellis? And I start heading up in the elevator. It takes an infuriatingly long time just to cover three floors. The blood is gathering, pooling in the sink. For a second, it feels like a blood tide rising. The drop, drop, drop from the faucet is red to your eyes. The blood in the sink red to your eyes. And for a second, as the new, fresh, hot blood burns in your system, it's like the blood catapults out of the sink like a torrent, sweeping down the hallways into the streets of London, sweeping everything away. As the knocking on the door comes, the last swirls of blood disappear. You might be in the clear. Your face looks good, sweaty, tired, red-rimmed eyes. But no blood in your face. How do I feel? You feel spectacular. Sharp. Perfect. Like the best day ever. Adrenaline pumping? Yes. Hands steady? You bet. You feel strong. Fast. I look at myself in the mirror and just nods and then I go and open. Uh, and on my way there, I like try to get into mindset of someone that just intercepted a... A suicide attempt. I open. She's breathing fast, shallowly. Pale, blood all over her clothes. Down the front of her shirt, on her jacket, on her fucking pants. First thing you see, body on the ground, pool of blood around. White, minimalist, trashy place. Francis, it's so much blood. I, I, think, I think he's stable, but there's blood everywhere. But but I, I think I think he's like, please, please check on him. I'm so glad you're here. I dive for the man, fumbling to get my basic first aid kit out and try and stabilize this man as best I can, trying to see what's occurred. As I'm doing this, I, in great irritation, mutter, what the fuck have you done, Ellis? What were you thinking? Why have you come Shut here? Shut up, I did nothing. I found him like this. I wanted to check up on him. I don't know what happened. It's just it was just blood everywhere, and I, I used a pillow and his belt, and I don't know. Do you, do you think he's he's gonna live? I start trying to see the man's condition. What can I do? Start cleaning with the blood. Start seeing the injuries. Start getting to what the fuck is wrong with him. It's clearly from the neck. He's been bleeding heavily from his collar. He's lost at least half a pint of blood, maybe more. 
maybe full pint and that's going to bring him into critical or shock. Yes, he's got a heightened temperature fluctuating, he's sweating, he's clearly in a state of shock and blood loss. And on his neck are two deep puncture wounds. I will try and stabilize him as best I can, knowing that our team will be here soon, but otherwise he needs a goddamn a blood transfusion, maybe, or something. Suicide? You found him like this? Yeah. Found gotta, him bleeding from the neck? Yeah, calm or, down, Francis. I got a, I get a weird feeling when I was talking to him. Like, he wasn't stable. He, he, he said a lot of things about wanting to... I don't know. Like, he wasn't really lucid or clear. And I've seen that kind of behavior before. So I... I've... <sighs> Yeah, I, I went here and I found him like this. I don't know if he did it himself or someone did it to him, but I, I did the best I could. I remark quite quietly as I start trying to administer to him as best I can. You say you found him like this, Sergeant. Are you aware that we've been following you and you've been here for quite some time and you've only just made the call to the ambulance? Yeah, because I tried to save his life. What, what do you think? Do you think I did it? I look at you. I kind of look at you quite uncertain for a moment. And then I kind of have a strange thought. I look to him. I reach into my jacket. And I just briefly take out the blood sample. The sample that I was given earlier. The sample you wanted so badly. I kind of just twirl it in my hand and I watch you extremely carefully. I don't know. How do I react? The instant reaction is not there. It's because the hunger is not there. You're full. You have no need so you don't twitch. She's perfectly calm. She shows no sign. None. She seems perfectly in tune. She's in better shape than we've seen her all throughout this investigation. Francis, focus. This is not about me, it's about him. I look at Ellis for a good long while, and I nod. Yes, of course. And I put the vial away. I am so unhappy. I don't know what's occurred, but... I know that a junkie doesn't suddenly no longer want their stuff. Suddenly she no longer wants the stuff she's been craving all day. Two and two make four. I put the vial away and I start trying to secure the man and I say nothing more as I wait for the team to arrive. I, I just don't know what he cut himself with. It must be some kind of a uh, screwdriver or something. The, the little I saw of the of the of the, the wounds, but it's it's so it's so much blood, Francis. So much blood. Do you find the pen knife that lies there in the blood? The thin blade. If it was thrust into the neck and twisted, possibly it could make wounds like that. But there's something wrong with the wounds. They're too circular. They're too perfect. Like black holes right into them. There's something almost mesmerizing by that mark. It's hard not to think that somehow, somehow, the old stories didn't get it entirely wrong. I know what I read in the reports. At least, I think I know what I read. I don't know how she's done it, but something has happened here, and I'm afraid, mentally, I no longer trust Sergeant Gabriel Ellis. But it's not the right play to call her out on it now. I'm going to have a word with Paul. For now, I simply nod, almost as if I'm not really listening to you, Ellis. I simply say, yes, of course, a blade. I'm sure he just... Used a blade. 
You've done very good work, Ellis. Very good work. Well done. Well done. Thank you. I go to the kitchen and see if his hand has any plastic bags that I could pick up the blade so we couldn't use it as evidence if we need it. Yeah. There's um, yeah, the same old Tesco bags lying tied together in knots. Yeah, as the team comes in around you wearing orange emergency medical technician uh, uniforms, coveralls, the med kits, the flashes of light, the Anna Kitwara going down on her knees beside the suspect, checking his eyes. Almost gone. We need blood stat. Yeah, make sure this plasma plasma ready. Yeah, she's calling into her comm link down to the car. It's chaos around you. But you're just standing there. Things seem to move so slowly. They have no idea what's happened. No one but Ward. Your eyes lock. And it's like something breaks. And you both know it. Something has changed. The game has changed. Who can you trust? When the blood can awaken hunger like this. The next steps will be perilous. The next nights will be sleepless. And it's still four hours until dusk. <laughs>